him who overcomes, I will grant to set with me by set with me on my throne, as I also overcame and set with my father on his throne. What we need to see in this is that number one, obviously he he doesn't like our lukewarmness. The other thing that we need to see, just like this church needed to see, is that he's right at the door. Yes, amen. If any of you are like me, how many times have you had somebody knock on the door, the house is a mess, everything's out of order? You need to go run and get a shirt on. But all the more whenever we're not living for, for God. Amen? Amen? It's like having drugs on the coffee table and your friends are around doing drugs and you hear <laughs> It's not a welcome knock. This is the police. Oh. <laughs> you have two seconds before we kick the door down. I'm not sure that. Give a little, little more real description. <laughs> Not sure what this book is. But whenever we're not ready, Jesus comes as an enforcer of judgment. Yes. And so the fact that he's at the door is not necessarily a good thing unless we're right with him. Amen? Yes. Yeah. He is coming. The judges. Yes. Behold, I stand at the door. He's right there. James 5 says, Establish your heart, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble, grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. That's why we need to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might to endure and to overcome. Amen. Amen. I shared a few home ministries back about beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is, there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nothing whispered in the inner room that will not be proclaimed from the rooftops. And really what Jesus was saying was, was all the stuff on the Pharisees that did great on the outside, but there will be a day where their hearts will be revealed. And the Lord wants us to be real with him. Yeah. And he's, he's standing and he's knocking at our door. And he's saying, I want to come in. Now talk about a stead sad state whenever Jesus is on the outside of the church and he's knocking on the door. The church is in pretty bad shape if, if Jesus is not on the inside. And Jesus is saying, can you let me in here? It's like, what were they doing? Singing songs to each other? Yeah, that's about right. A lot of what we do is kind of sing. But as our hearts Connecting with the Lord yes. as we're yes. singing. Maybe they're doing a lot of stuff for the Lord, but yet Jesus is not a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, something that blew me away was to hear the response of Chinese Christians that visited America and the, the, the proud Christians, American pastors and Christians that brought them around and showed them all the things and the successes and all the thousands of people that was coming to the services and all the programs and so forth like that. And expecting a great response, they, they asked these, these Chinese pastors, underground pastors, what, did, what do you think of the American church? And they said, well, we're amazed at all the things that, that you guys do and all the, the programs. 
But most of all, we're amazed at how many, how much you guys can accomplish without God. <laughs> without God. See, we don't need to advertise in newspapers a revival. There's a revival. God will let everybody know. Uh, it, it, it may spread in that way, but we don't need to schedule a revival. Lord, you're going to change us on this, this such and such day. Everybody come. But no, revival and change happens whenever we do as blind Bartimaeus, cry out to the Lord with our heart. Say, I need to see. Yes. 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 I'm blind and I need to see. Yes. Yes. I'm blind to what's what my life has become, what I've added to, what I've lukewarm in my life. And I need to see really how my life is and I need to truly see who you are, Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, the biggest problem in this church was they didn't see that they were lukewarm. That's really the difference between being cold and lukewarm is at least a cold person knows they're not serving God. A lukewarm, lukewarm person just doesn't care. Come on. Come on, Pastor. Just, I don't care. I'm not living for God. I'm not living passionate for God. I don't care. He would rather you be cold and deny Him, turn from Him, than to just name the name of Jesus He's standing at the door. We are living in the last days and the judge is at the door. And in these last days, he's making a call to whoever has ears to hear, to hear what he's saying to us, that we need to be reconciled to God, that we need to be hot and passionate before God and stop the lukewarmness in our life. Yeah. Stop adding and mixing the things of this world with our supposed relationship Amen. with God. Let me ask you this question before we close this morning. How would you rate your love for Jesus? How would others rate your love? Or more importantly, how would Jesus rate your love for him? On a scale from 1 to 10, what would it be? Would it be a 10? Would it be 1? That's the definition of hot and cold is 10 and 1. I'd say we probably find ourselves right there in the lukewarm middle. We need to be passionate for yes. Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. See, I'm not the only one that... You're not the only one being preached to this morning. I'm hearing this message echo off the back wall to myself. This is something that by his mercy God is speaking to Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet as we close here this morning. Are you living an El Lacart Christianity this morning? custom, made-to-order relationship. So just close your eyes before the Lord here this morning. Do you hear the knocking this morning? You hear God speaking to your heart this morning. You hear him standing at the door speaking to your heart. It's time to open the door. Amen? Yes. Yes. That's all you need to do is open the door this morning. If you're here this morning and you say, I have this sickness called lukewarmness. 